Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Maximum Medicine Radio. I'm Doc Martin. I am so happy because today I have with us a woman I greatly admire who's been of really powerful help to me over the years. Um, Welcome to Sharon Ann Klingler. Hi, Sharon. I'm so glad you're here. Hello, Sharon. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's so great for people to get to see you if they don't know you already. So to everyone listening, Sharon Klingler, to me, I know her as a medium. Um, Easily 12 years ago, I visited her when she was in her summer uh, place up in that is sort of south, um, southwestern New York um, in Lilydale, which is a community, a spiritualist community. And it's a community of mediums. And in the summer, the mediums come to vacation, really to work there. And the energy in that space is palpably phenomenal. Um, you can walk through the fairy woods. You can take a little walk around the pet cemetery, except be ready to cry because you can feel the love for the pets there. But this is where I first met Sharon Klingler, and she is a world-renowned medium. That means she is able to get messages from the other side. So messages from loved ones, from spirit guides, from the angel world. She is also an author. She's worked with television people. She's written many, many books. She's been at Hay House. The list goes on and on and on. But I learned tarot card um, readings from her. I learned about other psychic phenomenon. So I just, I'm just so happy to have you here, Sharon. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you so much. It's so exciting to connect with you and all your listeners and viewers. Well, you know, I think one of the things that's so wonderful about you having being here at this time is we really, really need the help of spirit right now, especially to remind us that even when the world looks crazy, everything's really okay and that we have a place in the world. What do you think about the value of spirit and the connections there for this time? Well, you know, I, I can't even, um, I can't, it's hard for me to speak about the value of spirit because it would be so exponential um, in our normal lives and certainly at this time too. You know, it's um, a lot of people don't, most people don't realize that spirit is with them all the time anyway. I mean, we have a lot less privacy than we think. And, um, <laughs> and during this time, We are the room, we feel as if we're in an empty room, but really we're not in an empty room. And so one of the things that um, I support everyone in doing is to connect with their loved ones and their guides and all of their spirit people on a regular basis, but also, and not just for information gathering. So many people do that. You know, I would need to go see a medium because I have this question or that question. But spirit wants to just hang with us too. And so um, so that's the other reason that it makes it very, very important for us to reach out and feel their presence and just relax with their presence and feel their support and their energy. Yeah, you're right. It's not just about, oh my gosh, we're in crisis. Let's go find spirit. It's an everyday, ongoing, every minute relationship. Right. But you know, some people say, oh, you, I don't feel that. I, that mm, I don't think so. One of the things that I have loved um, as I was growing my understanding and intuition and a sense of the other world, going to a medium if you know things about me when you have absolutely no literal world reason to know those things, then in my analysis of it, then that knowledge exists and it's a known f- phenomenon. It's known. It's in the records. And if it's in the records in a place that doesn't look like you should have any way of knowing it in the literal world, 
then there must be something bigger. And if there's something bigger, I have a place. And I'm, if I am known, then I have a place in this bigger world. So maybe that's kind of crazy rationalization. But to me, that was such a calming thing to get a reading from you. Oh, because hi. if you bring in my dad, who comes in all the time, and tell me things about him and things that he would say to me, having never met him, having never even met me before, then that feeling of having a bigger presence around me is so cradling and supportive and reassuring. And I carry that home with me and it helps me expand into connection with that. And that's been life changing. Uh -huh. Well, you know, it's, um, your dad and your grandma and all of the people in spirit are the ones that give me the information. Or if you go to any medium, it's spirit who brings the information. Um, but I tell um, my clients, especially the psychic ones, if you're psychic, you already have a vision of what your dad is telling you or what your grandma is telling you. So a lot of times a reading for somebody is actually especially about their life plans is a confirmation of what they already expect or anticipate anyway because they've already gotten the intuitive message for themselves so that's another reason why it also is very cradling is because it's it's confirming it's like wow i thought that was what it was and so now i know yes that's so and it's um and it's very helpful even to me as a medium, to um, hear, have other people, other mediums or other people give me insights and messages and um, confirm what I had been anticipating and heard from spirit. Well, you know, I'm up to maybe 12, 15 years ago. Um, I acted as if all there was was left brain. I have a PhD in physiology. I have a MD. Um, so I have strong academic intellectual left brain stuff. But there's always been this current of knowing, of knowing something that didn't have any, quote, proof in front of me. So experiences with people like you as a medium for me or other spiritual teachers have helped me, as you say, affirm that intuitive side and help it. Once it's affirmed, then you let it in a little more mm -hmm. and you start to believe, trust it a little more and you start to add it to your repertoire. And little by little, though, then that grows. Um, and so I love that. I love that meeting with people like you and you in particular have been my opening over the past 12 years. And so I think for other people to connect with spirit, to get that opening, I think they have to start to at least acknowledge the possibility and then try it on again. So how do you help people who say, mm, I'm not sure? Right. How do you help them sort of ask themselves, well, maybe you already do do this? Well, um, I point out that a lot of things that happen to them, and that's in, um, in the Life with Spirit book, um, that they're already doing. For instance, everybody sees little flashes, you know, in your periphery, out of the corner of your eyes. That is very often spirit. Or when we get an intuitive insight and we want to, um, even if it's just as simple as which road should I take in the parking lot, spirit can direct us to different things or thoughts that come to mind just interrupting what we're already doing and nagging at us. Spirit's throwing that into our experience as well. But people don't usually see that as spirit. People don't usually have an experience of, you know, other person, another entity, another uh, mind, consciousness coming to us. And so, um, it's hard for people who are very left brain and, and it's, um, mm -hmm. it does take some time to practice it. But um, 
the biggest thing that they have to get through is um, trusting their perceptions, realizing that um, the subtle nuances of the right brain are the actual ways that spirit talks to us. And the most difficult thing for people is that, you know, spirit doesn't talk to us through our left brain. Our left brain, our left parietal lobe is where we judge, where we measure, where we do math, where we analyze, okay? And that's the natural domain of the ego because that judges and measures and all of that type of thing. And the right brain, which is where we image, the imaging side of the brain, is where spirit talks to us. And um, our spirit, as well as grandma, as well as our higher guides, all of those people. And um, when people turn on or let themselves experience the right brain, then what happens is they start to say, oh, I'm only imagining it. Because it's your imagination that spirit uses. It's your imaging, your imagination. So they undermine it right away by saying it's only my imagination, which to them makes it mean it's only made up, which of course it isn't. I mean, everything that I get, almost everything I get is clairvoyant, which is visual. And, um, and so... I follow these little visual messages all the time. And if I didn't trust them, well, I wouldn't have a job, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and that's I love that. Um, we're going to take a short break. But when we come back, I want to hear more about the ways that you um, get your messages and other ways that other people could get them. Not everybody's clairvoyant. And so we're going to take a break. And then I am Doc Martin. I'm here with Sharon Klingler, a renowned medium and author. And when we come back, we're going to hear more ways that if you continue to practice with listening to those little flashes, you can build your intuition as well. And we'll be back in a minute. Hi, everybody. This is Doc Martin, Maximum Medicine Radio. I'm back with Sharon Ann Klingler, and you can uh, learn about Sharon. She is a renowned medium and author at uh, SharonKlingler.com. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Perfect. So that's Klingler, K-L-I-N-G-L-E-R. So we were talking about the fact that spirit does connect with us. And those places where we think it's imagination or a flash or, a oh, that funny feeling, it must not be true, are really places where we're being connected to the other world. Tell us a little more about that. Well, everybody has different senses. Um, uh, I said I, I'm a clairvoyant, um, but I do get some clear sentient things, which is clear feeling, clear knowing, clear sensing, let's say. Um, and um, some people are clairaudient where they get words. Um, sometimes I see words. I can, they can, spirit can spell words out in front of me. Um, but some people will just know words, and that's a clairaudient. There's also claircognition where you just get the whole feeling, the whole idea at one time. Then there's the physical feeling where you get a pull, and that's a one, another type of clairsentience. You might even get a smell. I don't know if you've ever smelled roses or cigarettes or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, I have plenty of times those things and indeed even pipe tobacco I get frequently in um, readings, but um, it's not my primary sensing. Um, that's clear olfaction because uh, it's the olfactory senses. Uh, my friend Tom Cratsley in Lilydale calls it Claire Sniffens. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're sniffing. And of course, there's Claire Gushens, which is tasting. So all of the six senses, the five senses of, of the body and touch too. Um, and then, of course, the sixth sense, which is just a psychic knowing, your telepathic knowing. And everybody will get that differently. But see, what, not, what kind of blocks people is they're expecting to get information from spirit the same way they collect data from the physical world which is they see a word, you know, on the television or in, on a sign, or they feel somebody's touch, or they get an image of a picture, they see a picture. But it's not that 
um, hard sensing. It's it's subtle, it's nuanced, and it's always internal. And we have to start practicing to think and experience and trust all of those internal sensings. So if spirit is connecting with us and using those subtle and nuanced ways, in your experience and the number, the amount of time that you do spend talking with the other side, why, why is there an urge for the other side to communicate with us? What, is, what does spirit see as the value for connecting with us or talking to us? Well, first of all, I th- and I think this is the most important and the biggest value is that they love us. You know, mm-hmm. what's the value in calling your mother? What's the value in calling your kids? You know, the value is connecting, being, ma- manifesting, expressing the love, the embrace. So, and I always say that the most important, I mean, yes, spirit could give you a message about, you know, go take that job or move to this city or, you know, do this, don't do that. But really the most important message that spirit seeks to give us is I'm here. I'm here for you. I love you and I embrace you and I don't want you to think I'm gone. You know, Um, uh, it's like communication should continue to happen after death because the relationships don't cease to exist after death. You know, it's as if if your grown son were moving to California, you wouldn't stop calling him, right? Because right. Of course he's he's still here for you and still wants to connect with you. Well, you know, some people think the state of death isn't even as weird as the state of California. So, you know. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. so reach out to the people in that world, too, because they still love us. If there is one reason that it, that is tops all of the reasons is that we love you and we want to continue this relationship. Then of course, secondarily to that is we love you and we want to help you. And, um, and so, and they can, you know, see, we have free will, but spirit can see around the bend of time just a little better than we can. Now, we, they can't see 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, okay? If you could go to somebody and get a life reading, that would, that would only mean one thing. That would mean that there is no free will. You want, this is the only path you have, and that's all. You have no choices, okay? And so spirit knows that we have lots of different choices in front of us, but they can see the leanings that we're taking based on the trends that we're thinking in our energy and our decision-making now. And then they can also inform us about different opportunities that are coming and also maybe help us know what might be best in different options that lie before us. So that's the kind of help that they want to bring you. And that help comes from everybody. Everybody is a guide. Some people are very, very specific to to create a distinction between spiritual guides and your grandma and your grandpa in spirit. To me, anyone who brings you guidance, including your dog and your cat, if they're in the spirit world, it's Mm -hmm. your guide, okay? But there are higher guides. There are the ascended masters. There are past life guides. And each and every one of them want to bring their love and their assistance and help us see a broader perspective, the perspective that they have. You know, once I started opening to my right brain and started saying, you know, maybe these flashes I have aren't crazy. Maybe I should be listening. And why don't I practice listening and gradually opening more and more and more? What I gained in that was a a real sense of calm and support. Because face it, walking on this earth and this human life is hard. There are lots of challenges, emotional topsy-turvy, fears around the corner, unsettled insecurities. But having that other world connection and having experienced where you get the calm because you just know it's going to be okay and you begin to trust that knowing, that is such a buffer for walking this rocky road we walk. Yeah. I find I find that so 
Um, and that's why I encourage everyone to try at least experience a reading from a medium, because for me, the I didn't need a word from my dad. I didn't need a word from my mom. But in getting them, I felt held, supported, loved, reassured. And that is bigger than all of it. That's right. really a good a good blanket to wrap around as we walk. And, you know, the more we talk to spirit for ourselves, too. I mean, I think getting a reading from a medium is a great thing because it really can open a door to a world where people really don't go them mm -hmm. their, themselves. Um, but uh, if, if we can start to actually through our meditations and even through quick little processes that we do throughout our day, um, open up to spirit on a regular basis. It actually broadens our reality where this isn't the only world and it's not even the most important world. And it certainly isn't the best world. You know, it's like, um, this is school. This is school and we're all in school and when we go to the spirit world, it, we're in, on vacation. <laughs> right, and, right. And we can do things that we never did before. And when, but when we have a perspective that both worlds exist, that then the things that happen in this world that we take so personally and that's so urgent and twisted about, oh, I've got to get this raised by such and such, or I've got to have this you know, book published or this, you know, uh, partner in my life or whatever, when we see that, wow, wait a minute, I have eternity. And all these people are with me for eternity. And there's no urgency about anything. So let's just take a deep breath into that and say thank you for the opportunity to see this moment is eternal, and that's really the big thing that we um, can take. One of the big things we can take away from having an interaction with spirit several times a day. Right, I love that, um, and I think it it does take away a lot of your fears, especially if you if I I no longer fear death. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not eager to move to the spirit world. I got a lot I want to do. I've got a lot of things I want to experience still. But I'm not afraid because when I feel that eternity and I've tasted it by my right brain experiences, all of a sudden it's like I just know that it's expansive and there's so much out there. So right now I'm 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 living, I'm in the human form. Um, and there's more after. So uh, that's a really good feeling. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, 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 it allows us to understand that death is a transition and we go from, you know, from the spirit into the physical, back into spirit. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about ways, um, when we come back, I want to talk about ways that um, you have helped people amplify their connection to spirit and make it more of a daily practice rather than a once every three years go to Lily Dale and see Sharon Klingler. Um, but when we come back, I want to go through some of those ways that you've found that works really well to amplify our connection. So we're just going to take a short break for a minute. Okay, everyone, we're back. I'm Doc Martin, Maximum Medicine Radio. We're here with my guest, Sharon Ann Klingler, an author, a medium, a clairvoyant. You can find more about her on SharonKlingler.com, K-L-I-N-G-L-E-R. Anyway, Sharon, let's, let's talk about more. How do people ramp up their connection to spirit? I mean, I personally love it when I've gone to Lily Dale and worked with Elaine Thomas or John White and often many times with you. But as you say, we don't have to make that 
dramatic of a once in a three year or lifetime deal. We can do this on a daily basis. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. how do you help people do that? Well, we ha- it, it really, I mean, Lilydale is a great place to go. And oh, it's beautiful. To, um, take classes or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but we really have to bring home what we learned there and practice it on a daily basis. The first thing that I would do, I would say, is meditation. Now, there's lots of different kinds of meditation. There's Buddhist meditations, which I do do those. I do visualizations. I talk. To, I do meditations where I'm talking to spirit. Um, for those people who don't meditate on a regular basis, I would recommend that you get some downloads or CDs that can help you. But don't do the same meditation over and over and over and over. And I'm going to tell you why. Because if you get bored with it, two things are going to happen. It's going to stop impacting you mentally. It won't take mm-hmm. you where you go there mentally. And you'll get also get bored with it and stop meditating altogether. Yeah. So Jack Cornfield, uh, tell me about his meditations. He has, um, he has some meditations that are basic Buddhist meditations, which are focusing meditations and also releasing the conscious thought when it comes up. Very simple meditations. Um, and that's, uh, those are very good to do. Um, he also has a few visualizations. But also, I would definitely support um, everybody to do some visualizations where they're actually meeting spirit, their grandmas, their grandpas, their guides, their past life tides. And that would happen in a visualization that would be could be led by a mediumship teacher. I have a number on my site, which is um, SharonKlingler.com, but also StarbringerAssociates.com, which is where we sell our products and things. So, but you can get there through my site as well. But there are lots of great um, visualizations done by a lot of mediums. But really, we have to practice using our right brain to image. And what I tell my students is when, when when you start to meditate and do a visualization, you have to give your imagination the job. Don't steer clear of your imagination because it's your imagination that spirit uses, the imaging that spirit turns on. And so you want to practice that every day. So that because that's the way spirit talks to us. And so if if whether we're left brain or even if we're artists, we still have to get used to thinking in the way spirit talks to us telepathically through the imaging side of the brain. So meditation is the very first thing to do. Then keeping a journal after your meditations of any of the symbols that you get. You know, sometimes, again, if you're clairvoyant, spirit will give you an image of a light bulb. Okay, and that could mean something to you. It could mean something to somebody else. And you have to find out what those symbols mean to you. And so it's very helpful to keep a journal um, in and keep listing some of your symbols, write down what you think they mean, but then be flexible and go back and say, oh, I thought that meant such and such, but now I find out that it really means this. Um, And so your symbols will develop as you talk to spirit. So I want to tell everybody a really uh, funny, cute, funny story. Um, I was at Lilydale one summer, and I had a, a session with John White, who's also a very famous medium. And he sat back and he said, I raise a beer to you. And he said, now, this isn't just about drinking. This is, beer is medicine. Now, no one else in the world would have recognized that that's my dad talking (laughs) because every night he had to have a beer and he'd say, this is not about drinking. This is about beer is medicine. So right there, dad must have sent John the symbol of raising the glass of beer. Like I recognize you, but I recognize you with the thing that I love doing every evening. So right away, I knew it was dad. Um, you know, I, I just started laughing because it was so obvious dad's presence was there. So, mm-hmm. yes. So you're right. Symbols have beer wouldn't have meant the same thing to my sister or brother, perhaps. Right. Um, and, so, and, and sometimes symbols don't even mean what to the medium, what they mean to you. I mean, you know, like John could have been saying that without knowing it was your dad or knowing that it had particular meaning to you. 
Um, mm-hmm. He, John is great. I, John is a very dear friend of mine and a great medium. And, um, and he is very big on noticing the symbols he gets us and trusting everything he gets. And so sometimes he'll get an astrological symbol. Like you'll see, I, I, he'll, he'll, he'll be in a reading with him and I see, I see a circle with a plus sign underneath. That's astrological. That's, I don't know what that means, but it's your life. You go look it up. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, the yes. other thing, you talk yes. about meditation, but that that is just sitting quietly trying to release my conscious thoughts for me is so hard. Uh-huh. I mean, I when I go to work, I'm I'm a physician, so everything is, you know, every th- every thought anyway. So for me, listening to guided imagery. So listening to your CDs and taking the journeys, because I do visualize very well, that's the way I can occupy my conscious and then go into that altered, that altered state. So well, I, I have, I'm glad you said that because a lot of people think that meditation is turning your brain off. That's not possible to do. That's why in the Buddhist meditations, they really have two primary types of meditations. They have a visual your focus, where you focus on a visual idea. You could also focus on a word, or you could focus on a prayer, any focus. And then when your mind starts to interrupt, you just turn it back to the focus. And then also one where you're releasing the thoughts as they come up. You can't make yourself wrong for having thoughts come up when you meditate. That's a natural thing. Our minds are like stampeding horses sometimes, and they're Mm -hmm. going to interrupt our meditations. So all we have to do is have something to turn back to. And you're right, visualizations where you're actually being led to see this, see that, whatever, can be very helpful when your mind interrupts just to go back to the voice on the visualization. Right. And that's also allowed me over the years to um, pay attention to the images I get. It's usually 4.30 in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, and I will have a very clear word or description or seeing something, and then I'll know when I get up the next day to really hone in on what that was all about. Um, Anyway, it was, it's just, it's wonderful when we start to trust that imagery side, how rich our lives can become. Right, exactly. And since you're a word person, that's one of the things that, you know, people sometimes don't have time to meditate, or if they did meditate, it's very important to me to touch in with spirit throughout the day. So what I do tell people is just, you know, just when you're sitting on your desk, close your eyes for a moment and take a deep breath and notice and the spirit person standing right next to you because there is a spirit person usually standing right next to you or just ask spirit for one word or get a phrase, close your eyes or get one simple image and just do these little like two second things, three second things, you know, a minute thing, whatever it is, how long, however long you want to have your dialogue with spirit, let yourself just sit down and notice that they're there and then see a word or feel a word or get a feel a sense in your, in your body as well. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing is linking to Um, your physical feelings. Um, You know, for me, if something doesn't feel right in my solar plexus, I've learned better pay loud attention to that. Mm -hmm. Something doesn't sit right. You're about to go, perhaps I'm thinking I might want to buy something. And I think, well, I'll do that tomorrow. And then in the night, I'll say, I'll get a stomach ache about that. Then I've learned, don't do it. Do not, do not do it. If I've pushed through it, and that's where, as you said, spirit can only see a little around the corner because my free will, I might be getting that message, don't do it. My free will bullheaded, you know, bulldoze on ahead, eh, do it anyway. And hence, hence the path changes. Right. Um, but, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's why Nostradamus had so many different quatrains that didn't make sense because mm-hmm. he was seeing all the different paths. 
Right. Well, we're going to take a short break. And what I want to do when we come back is I want Sharon to talk about the tarot deck. She and her sister, uh, Sandra, came up with a gorgeous, gorgeous tarot deck. I want to talk a little bit about that. And then I want to talk a little bit of how we're in this crazy corona time. Let's talk a little bit about bringing spirit in to really help us navigate these chaotic times. So we'll take a short break. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Doc Martin, and I'm with our guest, Sharon Klingler. We're on our last segment, and I really want to take a minute to talk about Sharon's work with the tarot cards because she has really honed her intuition and reading of symbols through the tarot cards. And I want her to talk about that as well as the deck that she and her sister made. And then I want to take a little bit of time just to close. Um, we have a beautiful poem to read to you and just how spirit's going to help us navigate these chaotic times. So Sharon, let's talk a little bit about the tarot cards. Okay. I started reading the Rider Waite tarot when I was 14 and it really had a very strong um, impact on me. And I actually, when I was at college, I actually was learning some, uh, various threads and things like that from someone whom I would call a gypsy and um, things that I had never seen. And even after that, subsequent to that, other types of spreads that I'd never seen before. So um, I read the tarot for a long time before I realized that spirit was attending every reading and participating. Mm -hmm with me when I would give tarot readings. And um, finally, they grabbed my body and made me aware um, that um, there was a spirit present. And I never looked back. You know, spirit always, even when I do tarot now, um, spirit kind of will point to this card or, you know, point to a connection between this card on the left side and that card on the right side. It's like spirit is very interactive with me, even in the middle of the tarot reading. So, but I think that the images help me develop some of my awareness of symbols and my awareness of even universal symbols, red roses, white lilies, you know, that type of thing. Um, but, um, and so it, it was a very strong experience of me for reading the tarot. And then of course, um, as a Hay House author, and by the way, I am also, I also teach on Hay House's certified card reader, um, the card reading certification course. And I teach both the Rider Waite Tarot on that and um, my uh, uh, Akashic Tarot um, that I did with my sister. And, um, and that just came out a couple of years ago. And that now is the only deck that I use. It really, um, I really um, asked for a lot of participation from spirit with that. And the imagery kind of it, it had its own kind of way, you know, its own kind of path, its own kind of energy. And um, and so it really speaks to me now. Not that there's anything wrong with the Rider Weight. I love the Rider Weight deck, but um, the Acacia Tarot is now my deck of choice because it speaks to me that way. Well, I want to attest to that because this is first of all, it's a beautifully colored, soft, uh, serene. You can feel the etheric energies. Um, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous deck. And then what the feeling you get. So I find it very infused with spirit because you get these uh, kind of a lift off of the page, off of the image where you get a feeling. Um, and that's what I, what I love is also learning. It may not be exactly the way the little book that comes with it tells you it should be. But if you're sitting with someone and you're doing, my girlfriend and I do readings for each other, you get, you look and it sort of compiles that image into a meaning for you. And then 
and perhaps the message then you are hearing. Um, so it's really a wonderful way I find to connect to spirit. It's mm -hmm. a wonderful way to focus and be in your right brain and be fluid with feeling those messages. Thank you very much. I actually, in the little book, in the introduction, um, before they give the meanings that we give the meanings of the cards in the book, um, there's a few ways on how to read the tarot. And one of the ways is not even to pay attention to what they say on. The okay. <laughs> so that's all right. I didn't flunk. Okay, good. It's kind of like you first get what you, what you sense intuitively, but also then just step right into a pit the and see everything that you feel and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just start speaking about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to take our last few minutes. Um, oh, just let me just close that off and say on Sharon's website, SharonKlingler.com, you can be directed to the products she and her sister put out her books and her tarot cards. Um, please check that out. But I want to take a minute in our last uh, last few things that we have here. There's a beautiful poem that Sharon has on her website. And I want to read it because for me, it's a calm in these crazy COVID times. So I'd like to spend our last few minutes together talking about how spirit can help us in these crazy times and start by reading this poem by John O'Donohue. This is the time to be slow, lie low to the wall until the bitter weather passes. Try as best you can not to let the wire brush of doubt scrape from your heart, all sense of yourself and your hesitant light. If you remain generous, time will come good, and you will find your feet again on fresh pastures of promise where the air will be kind and blushed with beginning. I love John O'Donohue. I mean, anything you read from him, you can just feel him. Yeah. Um, Wonderful dynamic energy. And I think that when we talk to spirit during this time, and that's the other thing, you know, I said before that even when life is normal, um, it's very important to create a relationship, you to them and um, to all of them. Um, but sometimes there's, there, there's a lot of us that are feeling awfully alone, even those of us that are in a home with uh, kids or, you know, a husband, parents, whatever. Um, but there's still a sense of isolation, obviously. And um, we can actually just give ourselves the opportunity to open to spirit and see them gathering around us, feel them gathering around us, just and really let the room fill up with all the people who love you and just give the, the job to your imaging brain, the imagination, and just close your eyes and take a deep breath and fill yourself with the word. I like to use the word oneness and you fill yourself with the word oneness and you feel oneness with all spirit and all of them start to gather and there's no division between you. There's no difference between you. And they're your grandparents and your pets and their pets and your cousins and your higher guides. And the room is filled with the people with whom you have total oneness with. And even if you just give yourself a moment or two of that, that will take you to less isolation and a great deal more power and more support. Hmm, that was beautiful. Thank you so, so much. You're Thank welcome. you for being here, everybody. This is Sharon Ann Klingler, um, a beautiful medium, beautiful author, um, somebody from whom I've learned a lot, and I know you can too. And thank you so much for being here and sharing that connection that I know will rich, enrich our lives. So I thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Martin. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And we'll close now. Thank you so much. Till next time.